From time to time, your sanitary pump requires routine maintenance to ensure peak operating efficiency. This video will teach you the standard service procedures of the Waukesha Cherry Burrell 200 Series Centrifugal Pump. It is important to note the use of a food grade lubricant in the maintenance procedure to ensure proper operation of the pump and its internal components. Use of other types of lubricant may cause damage to internal components, resulting in a malfunctioning pump. Please refer to the operation manual for additional details on where and how to apply lubricant throughout the maintenance process. Remove the casing clamp and casing. Slide the O-ring off the back plate. Remove the impeller retainer bolt and shaft O-ring by using a soft towel to secure the impeller and tapping the ratchet gently with a soft mallet. Note that the retainer bolt has standard right-handed threads. Pull off the impeller and back plate assembly and place it on a clean flat surface with the impeller shaft facing up. If there are any shims stuck to the impeller shaft, remove and place them on the motor shaft. Remove the deflector. Loosen the two set screws in the spring retainer and slide the retainer and washer off the shaft. Save the three springs. Use the back plate to slide the rotary seal up the impeller shaft approximately one and a half inches. Remove the O-ring and the rotary seal from the shaft and remove the O-ring from the seal. Lift the back plate off the impeller. To avoid seal failure, do not place fingers on the carbon seal face. Remove the four quarter inch hex bolts and stationary seat retainer ring. Pull the stationary seal and L gasket out of the back plate. Please note that the stationary seal is brittle. Prying or hammering on the seal plate can shatter the seal. If the stationary seal cannot be removed by hand, place a two and a quarter inch diameter plastic or wood rod on the impeller side of the seal and apply even pressure to dislodge the seal. Once disassembly is complete, perform the following inspections. Examine all seal surfaces and replace seals that are scratched, cracked, and or brazed. Inspect all O-rings and O-ring seats for abrasions, cuts, or other wear that could cause leakage. Clean all seat areas and alignment surfaces. Please note that the stationary seals are reversible. Use both sides before replacing them. Replace the rotary seal when the seal face extends less than 1 32nd inch or 1 millimeter from the body. Lightly lubricate both sides of the L gasket with a sanitary lubricant and insert it into the back plate seal cavity. Place the stationary seal with the seal contact surface facing up into the L gasket and insert into the back plate. Place the seat retainer over the stationary seal. Apply any seize compound to the threads and secure the retainer with four quarter 20 by half inch hex head cap screws and tighten evenly. Place the impeller on a clean flat surface shaft end up and slide the assembled back plate onto the impeller shaft. Avoid hitting the stationary seal against the impeller shaft as it could break the seal. Temporarily insert a 30 thousandths inch spacer shims between the impeller blades and back plate to provide the necessary clearance. Carefully place the rotary seal in position over the impeller shaft and down against the stationary seal. Lubricate and slide the seal O-ring onto the impeller shaft. Use the spring retainer as a tool to push the O-ring into the rotary seal. Slide the tabbed washer over the impeller shaft and engage the tabs of the washer into the notches on the outside of the rotary seal. Install the three seal springs into the holes in the spring retainer. Hold the springs in place with RTV silicone sealant. Slide the spring retainer over the impeller shaft until the slots in the spring retainer engage the drive tabs on the washer and the springs rest against the washer. 
Install an eighth inch Allen wrench between the tab washer and the spring retainer for spacing. With the back plate against the impeller, push the spring retainer down to compress the springs until the length of visible spring is approximately 1 8 inch. Lock the spring retainer in place by tightening the two set screws with a 1 8 inch Allen wrench. Next, remove the spacer Allen wrench. Install the deflector onto the impeller shaft, taking care to line up the indicator mark on the deflector with the keyway on the shaft. Remove the shims located between the impeller and back plate. Apply anti-seize compound to the motor shaft and install the key. Ensure the same number of shims are installed on the shaft as there were when the pump was disassembled. Upon aligning the keyway, install the impeller assembly onto the stub shaft. Lubricate and install a new O-ring on the impeller retaining bolt and thread onto the shaft. Place a clean soft towel onto the impeller to hold into place. Tighten the retaining bolt with a socket and finish by tapping the ratchet handle firmly with a soft hammer. Check the space between the back of the impeller and the back plate with a feeler gauge, 30 thousandths inch nominal, while holding the back plate tight against the bearing housing flange. Any axial movement of the shaft should not be added to the 30 thousandths inch nominal clearance. If needed, change this clearance by adding or removing shims from the motor shaft. Next, lubricate and install a new casing O-ring on the back plate. Install anti-seize compound on the casing clamp and clamp the casing in place. The Type 4 seal is essentially two Type 1 seals assembled back to back in a chamber which bolts to the back plate in place of the stationary seat retainer. Except for the additional components of the chamber and seals, Type 1 and Type 4 components are interchangeable. Once the pump has been relieved of any product pressure and the power has been shut off and locked out and the casing has been removed, remove the retaining bolt and the impeller assembly from the stub shaft and place on a clean flat surface. Locate the motor shaft shims and ensure they have not fallen off the shaft. Remove the plug from the side of the seal housing using a quarter inch Allen wrench. Remove the four hex head screws from the back of the seal assembly using a 7 16 inch wrench. Carefully lift off the seal retainer, L gasket, stationary seal, flush housing, flush housing O-rings, the rotary seal, and rotary seal O-ring. Loosen the set screws in the spring retainer and remove the spring retainer and springs. Next, remove the tab washer. Use the back plate to slide the rotary seal up the impeller shaft approximately one and a half inches. Remove the rotating seal and rotating seal O-ring. Remove the flush housing O-ring if it was left behind when the flush housing was removed. Lift the back plate and remove the stationary seal and L-gasket from the back plate. Inspect the seals and determine if replacement is necessary. Note the stationary seal is reversible and may be turned over and reused. Lightly lubricate the L-gasket on all surfaces and install the seal seat onto the L-gasket. Install the L-gasket and seal seat into the back plate with a new seal facing up. The L-gasket should fit fully into the back plate. Install the back plate onto the impeller. Use your fingers to protect and guide the opening in the seal seat over the impeller shaft. After placing the back plate onto the impeller, Install the rotary seal over the impeller shaft. Lubricate the seal O-ring. Install the seal O-ring over the impeller shaft so it rests on the rotary seal. Place the spring retainer over the impeller and push down on the spring retainer until you feel the seal O-ring seat into the seal. Then remove the spring retainer. Line up the tabs of the tab washer with the slots on the seal. Place the tab washer onto the seal. Install the spring retainer over the impeller shaft and onto the spring retainer. Make sure to align the slots of the spring retainer with the tabs of the washer. Place a second tab washer onto the spring retainer with the washer tabs aligned with the slots on the spring retainer. Place a second lubricated seal o-ring over the impeller shaft. 
Gently place the inner seal over the impeller shaft onto the seal seat, with the seal face facing up, and the washer tabs align with the slots on the spring retainer. Push down on the seal until you feel the seal o-ring seat into the seal. Generously lubricate the seal housing o-ring. The lubricant is used to hold the o-ring in place when installing the flush housing. With the seal flush housing flush, ports facing down, install a seal housing o-ring in the top side o-ring groove. You may need to stretch the o-ring to make it fit into the o-ring groove. Repeat the process for the second flush housing o-ring on the other side. Flip the flush housing over 180 degrees and hold the flush housing by the flush ports. Install the seal housing onto the back plate. Line up the screw holes of the seal housing with the tapped holes on the back plate. Assemble the lubricated L gasket and the seal seat together. Make sure the new side of the seal seat is exposed. Install the lubricated L gasket and seal seat into the seal retainer with the new seal face facing up. Line up the mounting holes and install the seal retainer onto the seal housing. Lubricate the four cap screws with anti-seize compound. Install while pushing down on the seal retainer to compress the seal springs and install the four cap screws by hand. Tighten the four cap screws using a 7 16 inch wrench. Place 30 thousandths inch shims between the back plate and the impeller vanes. Insert the shims in at least three locations around the impeller vanes. Tighten the aligned set screw on the spring retainer with a 1 8 inch Allen wrench. Rotate the impeller to align the second set screw on the spring retainer with the access hole. Then tighten the set screw. After both set screws are tight, remove the 30 thousandths inch shims between the impeller and the back plate. Wrap Teflon tape on the seal housing plug and install and tighten using a quarter inch Allen wrench. Confirm the motor adapter weep pole is facing down. The weep pole is a drain path if the seals were to leak. There are two weep holes to allow the motor adapter to be used for a double seal, horizontal or vertical flush. Confirm the motor adapter and the impeller shims are correctly installed. Note the shim pack is used to adjust the pump back face, front face clearance of the pump. Adding shims will increase the pump back face clearance and decrease the pump's front face clearance. Note a double seal uses a 20 thousandths inch large diameter shim as a deflector. Place the motor shaft key onto the motor shaft keyway. Place the impeller back plate assembly onto the motor shaft, aligning the keyway on the impeller with the keyway of the motor shaft. Push the impeller backplate assembly until the impeller shaft is resting against the step of the motor shaft and shim pack. Install the lubricated rotor nut o-ring onto the rotor nut o-ring groove. Lubricate the shaft stud with anti-seize. Install the impeller nut onto the shaft stud. While holding the impeller with a clean shop towel, tighten the impeller nut snugly by hand and then strike the wrench with a soft mallet to finish tightening the impeller nut. While holding the back plate against the motor adapter, check the back face clearance between the impeller and the back plate. It should be 25 thousandths to 35 thousandths of an inch. Install the lubricated casing o ring onto the back plate. Before installing the housing, rotate the back plate to align the seal housing flush ports with the holes in the motor adapter. Then install the casing by pressing it in place over the casing o ring. Apply anti-seize on the threads of the casing clamp and install onto the casing. Tighten the casing clamp once the casing is correctly oriented. A 9 16 inch wrench then can be used on the clamp if needed. Following these procedures will help you properly maintain your SPX Flow Waukesha 200 series centrifugal pump to maximize operating life and maintain process integrity. To order genuine OEM replacement parts or special tools, Contact your authorized Waukesha Cherry Burrell sales representative or visit www.spxflow.com slash WCB for more information.